name is Daniela Di Gian Antonio. I am the team leader for Digital Agriculture and today's host. Today's special guest in, is Nargiza Khan Oyayeva, Project Support Specialist with the Uzbekistan Country Office, and she will tell us about how to hack a hackathon, as she recently organized the Agriculture Hackathon Digital Uzbekistan, a competition for young innovators. Nargiza, welcome and thanks for joining us. Hi, colleagues. Hi, Daniela. Thank you for hosting the AgriTech Talks and, of course, having me today. My name is Nargiza Hajaeva and I am from FEA Uzbekistan. Nice seeing you all today. Thanks to you, Nargiza, for joining us today. As usual, I have four questions for you, and now we will launch the timer for 12 minutes as we need to get these questions answered before the timer ends. And in the last minutes, we will take a few questions from the audience. So to all participants, please write down your questions and comments in the chat, and my colleague Veronica will monitor it. So Nargiza, timer will start running now. Are you ready? Yes, let's do it. <laughs> okay, let's start. So Nargiza, first of all, can you just tell us what is a hackathon and how the idea of organizing this agri-hack came to life? Um, okay, so a hackathon is an event uh, usually hosted by a company or an organization, and it brings together programmers, IT enthusiasts uh, together for a short time to collaborate on a project and to try to come up with a solution to a problem. And let me give you a short overview of the project that has hosted the hackathon in Uzbekistan. Uh, the project is called uh, the peace building project here uh, between Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan. And uh, it's a UN joint project between FAO and uh, UNFPA. And it aims to have a cross border, it aims to enhance the cross border cooperation between these two countries. And it also recognizes uh, women and youth as peace building agents. So, one of the project activities we had was to organize an agriculture hackathon, and it would bring together uh, youth interested in IT, programmers, coders, and startupers. <clears throat> and uh, the main aim was to upscale. Uh, very interesting, innovative solutions in agriculture. And uh, we wanted to support uh, these young um, innovators to come up with these solutions. And another interesting point to mention is that currently in Uzbekistan and in Central Asia, uh, there is a lot of support for uh, the agri-tech ecosystem, and there's many other incubator programs, acceleration programs, and development partners also interested in agri-tech technologies. So for now, uh, I think it was the perfect timing to have an agri-hackathon here in Uzbekistan. Well, Nargiza, I'm impressed. So it was a part of a peace building project with Kyrgyzstan, if I understood well. The project itself was targeted at young innovators. And so you run this event, this hackathon to gather innovative ideas to solve the problems that the border and rural communities face. And eventually it was a tool to foster community building. Wow. So. Uh, I've been talking with many colleagues actually in the past months, some of them had the idea to organize a hackathon, but they were scared about the organizational effort. So I'm sure colleagues might be interested to, to learn this from you. How did you hack your hackathon? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a really good question. And here's a visual representation of the steps, main steps involved in organizing a hackathon. Uh, that's how we did it here in the country office. The first and uh, crucial step is to define the core information about your hackathon. It is uh, the initial planning stage and we want to get all the details right. And uh, this will help us also ensure that we're not missing anything. So for that, we would start uh, by mapping out the project outcomes, putting our targets together, uh, also having stakeholders on our uh, information sheet and uh, make sure that everything aligns with the project. 
uh, it's also very crucial to have all of those, uh, all of this core information into some data sheet because in the future there may be some partners interested in your hackathon, and maybe um, it's also a possibility that uh, they would want to co-host it together. So you can easily share the information about your project and your and your event with these partners. The second step is after we have all of the information we need, we have to consult. And um, it's when we approach relevant people, for example, it's our project team, we understand their needs. We look at the potential participants of the hackathon. We look at, we assess their needs. And here, since our project was a joint project between two countries, we had the re the amazing opportunity to consult with uh, FAO team in Kyrgyzstan. And uh, they had some experience with an <clears throat> agriculture hackathon back in Bishkek last year. So it was great to know um, what their experience was. So it helped us define the scope for our hackathon. The third step is having your team. Um, first of all, it's uh, you should understand which organization is uh, responsible for what. For example, if for us, it was FAO and the UNFPA, so we divided activities between uh, between us. And also, our event was also uh, co-hosted by national partners, including the Ministry of Agriculture and Ministry of IT. So we had a split of responsibilities between each other. The second step is to determine who is doing what between each team inside the team. So for example, one person would be responsible for applications, the other one would be responsible for event management. Uh, the next step is the event management. And uh, here we determine the venue, the needs of the participants. For example, if there's gonna be any participants with special needs, we should always take that into account. We draft out the agenda, invite speakers, and also uh, one crucial point is not to forget about marketing so that people know that there is this event uh, happening um, on the state and yeah. So, and the next step is to uh, start the application process and manage the interview. Uh, for us, what we did, we had a Zoom call and on a rolling basis, um, we had people uh, pitch their ideas for five minutes. And we had already an established criteria, which was developed by experts from the digital agriculture team. And um, we uh, had those short inter interviews where the candidates introduced each other. And in fact, we received more than 137 applications. So it was a lot of uh, a lot of work. And I would say the next step is to uh, do the on-site preparations is when you go to the venue, in our case, we went there one day in advance. Uh, it's those activities that you do like uh, reaching out to media people, uh, setting up a banner, and uh, making sure that everyone is on the same page, uh, talking with your team. And the last step is the hackathon. And there you are, you are on the event. And um, I would say the most crucial step is to follow your agenda and make sure that everyone is informed of the agenda because it happened to us that when the teams get super excited about working together, they often forget to go on coffee breaks or have some breaks. So we always had to make sure that they were informed about the next uh, thing that is happening. So yeah, that's all. Wow, Nargiza, I see it takes a big effort. So basically, you launched a call for application, you reviewed them all, and you even invited all applicants, 137, oh my God, to pitch their solutions. And then you started preparing for the event itself. There was lots of communication to be done at all stages. So yes, it was a big effort, but if I understood well through partnerships and collaborations, you were able to delegate many activities. So eventually it was manageable. Okay, but now tell me, so 137 applications, how many of them made it to the hackathon itself? And out of the, that weekend of, uh, you know, developing their ideas with mentors, how many of them were eventually the winners? Who won? 
Yeah, I totally forgot to mention the numbers. Yeah, out of 137 applications, I think, let me just pull up the figures. It was 21 teams with about 70 participants. And so we had 21 ideas uh, competing against each other. And uh, the winners, we had four winners and yeah, just short mockups of their presentations of their idea. First one was AgroData. And um, it's a simple and flexible, comprehensive agro enterprise resource planning system. And the thing that worked out like for us was the, the wow factor was that this solution is trying to reduce the human factor in the process of planning and exchanging information in agriculture. The next solution that we have chosen was uh, it's called Digital Agrotech. It's a monitoring system for farms and automation with AI components. And that's just their um, idea, this briefly. Uh, the next one is called uh, Magic Soft Agro Ecosystem. And it's an uh, agricultural learning and community module where uh, users can uh, teach, it, uh, teach each other. So the cool part that won our hearts was that um, here, the farmers can take a picture, for example, of a, a spoiled tomato crop and send it on a forum to the forum and uh, other farmers, smallholders or people in the neighborhood could, could comment and talk uh, about it and advise what to do next. And the last solution that was chosen was, is called Geostars. And here it's more scientific and it um, is a vegetation index detection in agriculture, which is also using satellite um, data. And I, this solution is also very, uh, was very interesting for the government as well, because one of the stakeholders was the Ministry of Agriculture. Yeah, and that's all. Well, Nargiza, it's so refreshing. Um, actually, we might uh, run a little bit of uh, out of time, so let me remind all colleagues to post their questions in the chat, but I still have one question for you. I think we still have some time. And it is my usual provoking question. Yes, it's so refreshing to hear of all these innovative ideas, but often hackathons get criticized because what happens after the event, right? So you gather all these young innovators over a weekend, you provide them with mentorship, they are able to develop their ideas, eventually you are able to award the most promising ones, but then if you are not able to think of the next steps and how to support them to go from idea to a small pilot or rather proof of concept, making it a bigger pilot and eventually validate it with the market and then scale up the solution, all these ideas will have the risk that they will die very soon. So have you thought about that? Of course, that's a very interesting question. And um, yes, unfortunately, there are so many factors that affect the sustainability of startups. And our uh, recognizing that our approach at FAO was uh, to provide a platform, first of all, for the youth to interact, engage and collaborate with a common agenda uh, to come up with an interesting solution to tackle one of the food systems challenge. And uh, while this, pro uh, while this uh, platform contributes to the overall objectives of a project, I would say that um, during the hackathon, uh, the youth were given the opportunity to also network with mentors and have on-the-site consultation about their ideas, about their projects, about their team. And uh, they had many opportunities to ask any of the questions they wanted, whether it was technical because we had technical coding mentors or whether it was something like if the solution fits the market because we had digital experts, uh, digital agriculture experts and just agriculture experts that could talk to them and say if it's right, wrong, and how to improve it. So uh, this approach would help the youth uh, to take their idea and go further because there's plenty of opportunities out there. There are many acceleration programs. There are many uh, funds, programs they can apply to. And another thing at FAO, what we are trying to do is to connect them to these opportunities uh, because we have 
big network of development partners and we know of these programs, uh, we are sending them some information about them. And of course, they can reach out to us and ask how they can apply or what to do to get their idea heard. Because hackathon, it's not always about winning. It's important that we promote these types of opportunities for the youth and they are empowered to take the next step. Thanks, Sarkisa. We really, really hope that all these innovations will survive and will make it into available products in the markets to solve the challenges that Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan face. I can see we are getting some questions in the chat. So Veronica, can you help me pick one or two? Thank you, Daniela. So um, Nargiza, we have two very um, connected questions. So the first is whether only professional developers should be invited to hackathons or beginners can be invited as well and how to choose right participants. And the second question would be, um, which channels did you use to invite young innovators to work on agricultural channel challenges? Did you engage any community leaders to promote the hackathons? Thank you very much for the questions. So I will start with the first one, if uh, professional de developers should be invited to the hackathon only. Um, first of all, uh, like mentioned before, it's very important to establish uh, some type of criteria. And uh, we had help from our digital agriculture team. We also have this digital agriculture expert, national one, whose name is uh, Murat Hasanov, yeah. So we had those consultation moments and we already had some criteria by which we wanted to select our participants. And um, apart from this criteria, we looked at uh, participants as a team, not individually, because on a hackathon, it's important to have a variety of people and uh, a team can consist of, uh, for example, uh, my marketing specialist or a backend developer, a junior developer, a senior developer. So there, there can be different roles in a team. So of course, um, like beginners can apply, more uh, professional uh, coders can apply, anyone can apply as a team. And um, if you have the criteria, if you look at their idea, if you look at their teams, uh, you can always decide like who to choose to uh, participate in your hackathon. Thank you very much for that question. And the second question, um, just a second, I'm reading it. Um, which channels we use to invite young innovators to work on agricultural challenges? And if we have engaged any community leaders to promote the hackathon. Okay, the channels that we used was, first of all, uh, because we had a co-hosting co of this event, um, the first channel that we used was the channels of our national partners. Uh, the event, the hackathon was uh, co-financed by the Ministry of IT's uh, regional hub in Andijan, which the uh, project is being piloted in, the area uh, of the pilot. And uh, they have uh, their own uh, channels, their own channels through which they, they could spread information about our hackathon. The other channels we used was uh, through Agency of Youth Affairs and uh, through our, um, our own network of development partners. And if we knew any project that was interested in hackathons or had an innovation component, we just spread a message or sent an email directly to those uh, teams. And um, so that's how we got uh, the initial let's say, uh, awareness raising for, uh, for the hackathon. And community leaders to promote the hackathon. Yes, we did. Uh, inside our project, we often visit the pilot uh, areas in Fergana Valley where the project is happening. And um, we have contacts of some community, youth community leaders. And uh, we also sent them some uh, message or uh, an announcement that a hackathon is happening so they could apply. And these were the primary channels that we used uh, to communicate the uh, event that was happening. Thank you very much for these questions. They were very interesting. No, thanks to you, Nargiza, for sharing all these experiences with us. 
it was really great to learn from you how you hacked your hackathon. And um, it was a pleasure to have you today, really. Thank you so much.